about having a conversation with my mom and Ashley. Welcome to Generations, a celebration of motherhood, okay? So we're going to talk a little bit, but before we do, can we start with some prayer? Mm -hmm. Let's start with the word of prayer. Father God, we just thank you for this opportunity to come together and to celebrate motherhood. What a great gift that you've given us. And we pray that you would be in our conversation and that everything we say will bring glory and honor to your name and that we would minister to all who are watching. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 I want to share one scripture before we start. And I'm so excited <laughs> about um, the power of generations and us connecting. I'm here because of you. You're here because of me. Yes. And uh, you just had a little one not too long ago. He's here because of you. Yes. Um, but I love this, this scripture, Psalm 145 and 4. It says, one generation commends your work to another. To another. Yeah. They tell of your mighty acts. And it's because of your testimony and your life that I grabbed hold to the faith. Yes. And I'm strong today because of your faith being strong. So thank you. <laughs> yes, <laughs> thank you thank so you. much. <laughs> and, and the beauty in that is that it continues. I've seen God's faithfulness in my life. I've seen God's faithfulness in my children's life. And again, I'm gonna keep mentioning him throughout this whole conversation. Uh, I'll mention little Wyatt because seeing <laughs> him born, um, was just seeing God's faithfulness to another generation. Yeah, and right. you have how many great grands now? 14. I think 14. Yeah, yeah. why it was number why 14. Why was number 14? It's a lot yeah. of great grands. And, and, and I think you have more on the way, but yeah. uh, we won't, we won't talk heard. about that right, right now. You Keep heard? That. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so mom, uh, let me just start out by saying thank you for being who you are. Um, we should have got some tissue for this. Yeah, I need some tissue. The waterworks are starting. Yeah, the already. waterworks are already starting. Um, but thank you for your yeah, your your faithfulness. Thank you for your faithfulness um, to God. Your faithfulness to Dad. Your faithfulness to us. You know, as children, and I'm sure you can speak to this too. But as children, you don't really see the value of motherhood. It's not until you start yeah. getting yeah, older. For sure. <laughs> and then when you become a mother, I'm Absolutely. like, oh my God. <laughs> I mean, you had 10 children. Like, what did I do yeah, to my mother? <laughs> right. Lord, forgive me for everything I did wrong <laughs> to her. Yeah. Because you had all 10 of us, right? You also worked outside of the home. Mm -hmm. You cooked. I cooked. Yeah, I mean you cooked. <laughs> we were hoping to have some fried chicken Did today. Did you but... enjoy cooking or was it just <laughs> no. a necessity? You no, I, I never really enjoyed cooking. <laughs> really? But I wow. had to get with it. Yeah. <laughs> wow. My, my mother-in-law was a great cook. She and was. my husband was not going to have anything less. <laughs> wow. She was a great you cook. You had some oh big shoes to fill. Grandma. Cook. Oh, my goodness. She could cook so good and it always looked so pretty, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, so, yeah, you had a hard act to follow. Yeah, but but he was an only child, so she only he had was to cook for him. Child, you had right. 10 kids to cook for, right. so I'm sure the presentation. And she never understood that. <laughs> yeah. Grandma didn't understand her, that. No. Her expectations were maybe a little high. But was she? Yeah. She had only one child to feed, so yeah. I'm sure she, you know, had a little bit more. Time yeah. So, yeah. so Put for all the, the mother-in-laws out there, they should be nice. Be, nice. be, be easy on the daughter-in-laws. <laughs> yeah, because he was the only child, so he was pretty spoiled. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it was spoiled. And you were, you just only had one sister. One sister. Right. right. So you guys came from small. Families. And yeah, small families. Mm -hmm. They came together and said, "Here we go. Let's, we will never be lonely again." <laughs> yeah. That's not quite what we said. <laughs> But, but I think maybe he did. <laughs> did he want to have a lot of kids? Yes. So he, yes. his dream came true. Mm -hmm. You wanted what, two? 
two. I wanted a boy <laughs> and a girl. Wow. That didn't happen. N not at all. <laughs> that didn't happen. You had seven you boys had straight. Seven, seven boys, to get boys a girl. straight. Wow. Unbelievable. But there's so many lessons that I learned from you um, in, in your patience and, you know, your consistency of making sure that we were raised in a way that we would fear God for the rest of our lives. Man, I absolutely. mean, literally. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, and so, go, you know, add it to your, your responsibility, or should I say your, your um, routine between working, cleaning, cooking, you made sure we were at church. Oh, definitely. How that important was, was that? Oh, that was first on the list. Why? Why was that the first on the because list? Because that's where you want to learn more about the Lord. Mm -hmm. And that spirit could flow into you. Right at church, if you had to go to church and you went to sleep, mm -hmm. I felt like that spirit was still there. It's the atmosphere. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And talk about how the importance of like the church community in raising kids. Oh my it goodness! It takes a village, and you know that firsthand. Oh, do I ever! I thank God for. I, there were a lot of young folks. I was young then. Right. Yeah. Right. But there were younger ones, you know, mm -hmm. below me, and they just loved to come and get one of my children. One of your many <laughs> children. <laughs> so that God. that was a great help the church community so that's good I, even if uh, sometimes I wasn't able to go or we weren't able to go the kids still wanted to go they would take them to church awesome. so wow. your life was built around the church so how important is that because sometimes people don't want to ask for help how important is it to understand that you need other people to accomplish what you had to accomplish well, there is a great need, mm -hmm. and, and hopefully it's someone you know that's around you that you're yeah. comfortable with with your kids. Yeah. Um, me, at that time, I really know, didn't know how <laughs> great it was, you know, that I needed all that, mm -hmm. but they were there. They were there. They were there for me, the younger ones and even the older women. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, sometimes I'd go to church and get a little rest. Because <laughs> ah, people yeah. would come and take them. That yeah. was probably one of the ch times you had multiple hands to right. help you out so you could just kind of have Absolutely. some relaxation. Until the, my oldest grew up, yeah. you know, and yeah. they learned to help. To babysit, yeah. yeah. And I, I think that's a good lesson to everyone who's watching who might not be a mom yet, you know, it's a blessing to be a help to other people. For sure. You know, as Absolutely. we celebrate motherhood, you, we have single mothers, we have so many different people who need help. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a blessing because I, I, I know all those people now right. who helped raise us. Right. And they're like having, you know, I have, I don't know how many mothers, great moms. <laughs> I have Evelyn, I have Betty. Yeah. We could go on and on oh, the list yeah. of people who were so present in our lives and Absolutely. they're still there now, mm -hmm. you yes. know, and so it's a blessing. And I'm sure they were blessed by being a help. Right. You oh, reap what yeah. you sow. Yeah. So if you want to have help when you're a mom and have a family, start sowing help. Start yeah. sowing your time and asking, how can I help out? What can I do? Because that's going to come right back around to you. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And you're experiencing that now. I am. <laughs> I've got so many people got that so are many. willing to help. So right. I guess I must have done some sewing somewhere. <laughs> I must have been helping somebody out because we have so, I mean, out even outside of our family, we have so many people that are like family that are like, let me know if you ever need a babysitter. Right. And I'm like, this is great. Yeah. And I'll so, take you up on that. Yeah. <laughs> so as we celebrate mothers, you know, those people who are single or who are older, anybody with extra time, you know, and care, Absolutely. you know, remember that you're really ministering to that, that mom when you take out time to say, Hey, let me babysit. Yes. If you need anybody, Absolutely. let me watch them, you know, mm -hmm. uh, or if you need me to make some errands, you know, let, errands, let me clean the house, errands, clean the house, help out right. with laundry, all yeah. those little practical things that all of that helps go a long way. Mm -hmm. um, tell me some of the challenges that you faced as as a mom. You know, um, there were some challenges, mm -hmm. but they weren't. They were very few. Very few. Awesome. And I, I attribute the, that to being young, 
and having the energy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's true. I, I look back now and wonder how in the world I did it. How <laughs> you made it. The, it well, you had your first one in what? You were 17, 18? When I you was 17 when I married. I had the first baby. I was 18? Just before I turned 18. Just before you turned 18? Wow. Okay. And um, yeah, yeah, it was my birthday present. I, I, my birthday is on the 22nd of September. <laughs> he was right. born on the 24th. That's right. Wow. David is on the 24th. Wow. But. Um, like I said, at that time, I was young, had a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't really a challenge. Okay. It was a routine I had to get into because yeah. as they kept coming and, and you know, adding and coming. going and starting school, we had to have a system to go yeah. by. You yeah. Know? You couldn't just get do things there. off the top of your head. This had to be done Planet at this time. and. Out. So once we got into that routine, we had a you know we had it going on there. Okay, so and you know your dad was into sports, so I was about to say we're going to get to that. Going, oh, yeah, okay. we're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. What were some challenges for you being a mom? Yeah, but okay, I'll, I'll answer that I in a minute. Hear your but challenges. I want to bring out I want to bring out this one point which you brought out, which I think is great for mothers as we celebrate mothers and also um, try to give wisdom th that is planning really helped oh, yeah. to bring peace because a lot of times we know people have children and it's so new it overwhelms them mm -hmm. and you know they go through a lot of different emotional um, feelings ups and downs but right. planning can eliminate a lot of that absolutely okay that's good that's yeah. good you asked me what ash what are what were some challenges oh. for you in, in motherhood and um, balancing everything. I didn't. I didn't have a lot of challenges, really, because I had mom. You know, um, she was there with me the whole time, and I knew she knew everything <laughs> yes. that you could know. <laughs> what was so funny was I remember when I was in labor with Alvin, my first one. Ashley's my second one, and you came in the room, and I thought mom was gonna hang out with me. And you looked at me and said, oh, I can't take it. I got to get out of here. I'm like, you can't take it. What are you talking about? You can't take it. Well, you see, when we were having babies, people didn't come into the delivery room. <laughs> but I wasn't even in the delivery room yet. I was still hooked up to the oh, monitor. labor room. And you, right? They just put you, you in like, there. I'm going you were out. there by yourself. Until yeah. she you were like, it. I'm going so outside. I didn't, you know, see anything. That, just like Debbie, when she came along, she wanted me to go in the living right. room. You, you said, said no, no, thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see all that. And I didn't want to be around with you moaning and groaning. Yeah, I so, just wanted to be near if you needed that's me. That's right. He's like, I'm going to be outside the door praying. I'm like, okay, a lady who has 10 kids. I'm having my first one. But, um, but and challenges, I think, come for me or came for me. But I think it comes for most of us as the children get older. Mm -hmm. having the wisdom, you know, and, and so I remember Ashley um, went through this spell of saying bad words. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Where child. did she get we them? Were raised, raised school. We were raised. I learned them in right. preschool. I didn't as hear as them as in the home, soon, obviously. Yeah, we didn't curse. We don't believe in cursing. We didn't watch it on television. When I started going to preschool, I learned a lot of colorful language. <laughs> we, we, her, I think it was probably her first week in preschool. She, I think she got every bad word out that, that was out there, and I couldn't believe it. So one day, one day she was cursing at her doll, and I was like, "What did my the Barbie doll? What did the Barbie really doll do?" So I remember me. calling mom, saying, "Oh my God!" And mom said, "Don't worry about it. Just keep teaching them the right way. Just keep teaching them the right way." And so every time she would say, "I'm like Ashley, don't say that word." One time we went to a restaurant <laughs> and little Alvin was sitting next to her and the, the waiter came and said, may I help you? No, no, the waiter came and he brought the food and Ashley looked at Alvin's hamburger and said, what in the H is this? And we said, oh, oh no, she's cursing. <laughs> she's cursing out in public. But I looked at, at her and I said, I said, Ashley, 
don't say that word. You didn't it's react too like, much. It's just like, okay, okay. <laughs> so she went through all of them, and uh, I never heard her say them again. But you told me just be patient, you know, and, and that was one of the lessons that I learned from you. It was just like speak the word over them, correct them, because you believed in correction. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and, and continue, just continue, because God will show up. And, and so that would have to be the most challenging thing is just learning. Let me ask you that, Mom. I only had two. And even though they're a lot alike, they're very different. No. You having 10 of us, all different. did that present a challenge or no? You were all different. Yeah, we're all different. So uh, just learning to know how you have to treat each one of them. Wow. It, but it all came down to the same thing, you know, teach them, mm -hmm. discipline them and as they're growing up. And to me, that's pretty amazing that, and Ashley, you can, you can speak to this. Um, it's pretty amazing to me that you had all 10 of us and I never felt like I was overlooked. I never mm -hmm. felt like you didn't love me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, you guys really even though you're telling me now you knew we were all different, we all felt like, and I think I can talk for my siblings, that you treated us all with the same love and respect and, and discipline. I mean, you treated us the same, mm -hmm. right? Oh, yeah. And, and I, think that's, I think that's huge because I, I hear stories of people <laughs> saying I was the middle child or I was the... What did you what did you feel? Well, I want to know who's your actually your favorite child. I think <laughs> you can answer that question now, right? I, I think I've asked you before now. Who's yeah, your but it's the same answer. <laughs> <laughs> there was no You don't no have favorite. a favorite? No. Even in a certain season it wasn't like, oh, I'm really a certain getting season. Along you with really try to start some. Cuz I I mean, of course, I think you can love all your kids the same. But that doesn't necessarily mean you, you're going to. You want to be with all enjoy of them. them the same way, like or <laughs> well, how is it? There's a difference in the, in the yeah. enjoyment and being around them because you know how they are. Ages and all that, and, yeah. And you know if you don't want to be around a certain one <laughs> yeah. for a certain reason. <laughs> you had a lot of options. But I that love them all the same. Of course, of course. So can you? What was there a big difference in your when it came to actually having a relationship with your kids with sons versus daughters? Good question. Was that a was that a big difference once you finally had my mom and raising her, was there a difference in that or did it feel kind of the same? Well, no, it was very different. After having seven boys, yeah, she was a breeze. <laughs> yes, tell the world. Just an tell angel everybody. They don't like to hear that. <laughs> yeah. She had seven boys. So the <laughs> boys, I'm guessing, were pretty rowdy. So rowdy she came along and, and was oh, just God. a different temperament. All the over the place. And but, helpful, uh, I'm sure. She was very mild, okay. and they don't like to hear me say this. <laughs> they say all of a sudden you didn't have to discipline her. So, well, I didn't have to discipline didn't take her that same. much because no. she was a mild mannered child. She was just See? the perfect daughter, See? and that's the difference <laughs> well, between well, boys the difference and between girls. Them, I, I, I was I was speaking at a church the other weekend, and I shared this. Um, they got whippings. My brothers got whippings probably weekly. Every Sunday almost. <laughs> Every Sunday. And I used to say, why do y'all do that? Because mom and dad <laughs> well, would tell them to be still, yeah. do right. Uh, what was our sunshine band teacher name? Joyce. Joyce Glenn. Sister Joyce, right? <laughs> she would go to my dad and say, now Skippy, because y'all call dad Skippy. Skippy, don't whip them. <laughs> but they were, they were talking today. <laughs> and so the boys would be like, oh, man, why are you going to tell him if you don't want to whip them? Right. That, that disclaimer didn't help. No. Now, don't so whip them. We would stop off sometime or either when we got home and it would it'd get a switch. It was a switch back then. And they would get it. And so I would say, no. You got to so you mean every them. Sunday night? <laughs> every Sunday night. At least, yeah. That's why you didn't Sunday get night. in trouble. You, That's you why. saw the pattern. It's not because I, was, yeah, I saw the pattern. It's like, you know what? They really believed in the scripture. <laughs> you spare the rod, you spoil the child. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to do this thing right. So she didn't get that many whippings. <laughs> no, she didn't she have, she have to. She got, no. she got a few. I, I got maybe two. I can remember my whippings. Because it was when I wanted to hang out with BB, 
Daniel, oh, Michael. She's blaming them. I got in trouble with Phil. Remember? <laughs> yeah, I heard Remember Uncle the Daniel water got fight? The most. Oh, do I ever? <laughs> Mothers, especially mothers of color, we understand that when you get that hair done, oh, you, don't, yeah. you don't play with water. No, absolutely <laughs> not. Never. And, and mine's was slick like yours. I had got it nice pressed. and pressed. And I decided <laughs> nice I wanted pressed. to play with the guy's water fight. Because oh, it was, no. what, Easter Sunday? Oh, no. I don't not know what Easter. Sunday it you was. You really don't want to do that. But I Those said, Easter the guys curls. was like, no, you just got your hair done. And I'm like, no. I said, I can play with you guys. I can fix my hair. <laughs> and uh, it, it started waving up. It started waving up. Oh, she got it so wet. And oh. Mama looked at my head and said, what in the world happened to your head? And I was, oh. she said, oh, y'all getting with me. And you, took, you took her to the salon to get it done too, yeah. right? So oh, she yeah. paid she money. Paid, she oh, paid the money. money you were the time. there for a while, yeah. It took a, took a few hours, I'm sure. So that time, not only did I get a whipping, but I'm the reason that BB, Daniel, Mike, <laughs> they all got a whipping. Because they had cleaned up the, the place as far as the water fight. So, <laughs> so anyway, we got it that time. But, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. you and dad both were just so consistent. And I just believe that it was the, the word of God. I oh, guess they was, kept you guys was. consistent in raising us, you Absolutely. know, um, in the inner city of Detroit, you know, mm -hmm. to have all of us and and not having to go get us out of jail. <laughs> you didn't have to God. bail anybody yes, out. Yes, bail anybody great. out. I, I think <laughs> keeping us in church, because I just remember being in church all of the time and we loved it. Mm -hmm. You know, we loved it. So. Thank you again for your consistency. And mom was just cool. You know, mothers, mothers are amazing. I mean, I, I remember grandma and your mom, mm -hmm. you know. Um, mothers are amazing and, and they are to be celebrated. And I know yes. you, you yes. always, I love the way too, that the way you took care of your mom before you lost your mom. And mm -hmm. I know people are watching today who have lost their mother and we want to encourage them because some, this is a hard mm -hmm. holiday for some people, yeah. yes, you know, absolutely. so maybe just share with me, you know, the love that you have for your mom and, and maybe what you went through when, when you knew we were at the end mm -hmm. of, you know, being with her. Yeah. Well, she was a great mom and, uh, I had her for 84 years. Yeah. She died at the age of 84 and, uh, in those times, maybe about three years before the time of that she went through some changes mm -hmm. and uh, we took care of her first at her house where uh, we had people come in and stay with her mm -hmm. but then about a year before she passed um, she had to go to the hospital and they were ready to send her to uh, assisted living so I went there and sat with her and she kind of knew that's what they weren't wanted I said well You've got to go home from the hospital now. Mm -hmm. I said, but you know what? Why don't you come home and stay with me? And that made her so oh, happy. Yeah. I had got the permission of my husband. Mm -hmm. And she came and spent the last year in my home. Yeah. But uh, she was a great mom. And um, yeah. I, I felt that I had to take care of her. And yeah. I had to watch over her and keep her near us. I know, I know everybody can't do that right, because right. it is quite a bit of work, work right. mm -hmm. and you have to have people Expenses. come in and help you. Mm -hmm. But I believe that you should always be with your mom. I know one time she had a stroke and she had to stay in a nursing home for a little while, mm -hmm. yeah. but I saw to it that I was there every, every day. Every day, that's right. And I'd go certain times of the day to make sure they were treating her right. Yeah. Yeah. And if I couldn't make it, because at that time we did travel quite a bit singing, my cousin, whose name was Pauline, yeah. she would always be there to right. fill in for me. Yeah. So I think, I think uh, a lot of times the, the job of being a mother a mother, you seem thankless, you know, mm, you don't, you don't seem yeah, to get the accolades that you need, but that's a great, it's a great job. Yeah. It's quite a job. Yeah. And uh, God gives us the wherewithal to do it all. Yeah. So I think children should be mindful of yeah. everything their parents went through so they can be 
wonderful to them, just yeah. like you all are to me. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You, we, you reap I had you 10, mm -hmm. but I've got so many around now, I don't have to want for anything. Right, that's right. You know, that's Mama, right. you doing okay? And if one doesn't call enough, like I think Marvin and Bibi have something going on. Well, They're you didn't competing. call her. <laughs> you didn't call it, and he he called me while I was here. He said, "Bibi been over there yet?" I said, "Well, he didn't make it today. Oh, I'm gonna get on. He if, he'd be hollering if 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 you were here and I wasn't over there. So yeah. it's a good thing. It's a win-win situation for me. Yeah. You yes. never have to be. I don't uh, have to worry. Yeah, you don't have you to. You put worry. in your you paid your dues. Uh -huh. You put in your time. But, yes. but you Pay said off. something that I think is so important as we talk about celebrating motherhood. One of the scriptures is honor your father and mother. Absolutely. You know, and Absolutely. you taught us to honor you and to honor dad, but also we saw you guys honor your parents. And, and, we... and that means to honor them. Uh, my dad uh, my, and mom got a divorce when I was five years old. Okay. And so I didn't spend a whole lot of time with him to some of the summers. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he wasn't really that close to me right. and my sister, but, you know, he was there to take care of us. Mm -hmm. But when he got older, I connected back when after I'd had all of you all, I, yeah. I kept I calling, that. you know, kept a, a little conversation going with him. But after you all were grown and he met all of you, he was so sorry that he hadn't been in your lives. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. I went on to take care of him. Because even though he wasn't there for me wow. through growing up, he was my father. Mm -hmm. And I, the scripture does say, honor your father honor. and your that's mother, right. that your days will be long. Yeah, that's right. It's a benefit to you mm -hmm. yeah. to do what the scripture says. Yeah, Regardless of what kind of parent they were. Absolutely. And we became, we, became, we became very close. He lived to be 95. Yeah. That's amazing. So that, that's another good point. And, and I right. just want to keep highlighting, you know, a lot of people have, we have a great relationship. You, you've been Absolutely. there. But you, but you, a, a lot of people are watching who don't have that relationship with their mom. Some, some don't have their mom with them, but some, you know, they're alive, but they haven't been a real mom to them. They right. haven't nurtured them. They right. haven't raised them. But what you're saying is they still, Yes. deserve to be honored that's right you and, and it's not even about being des honor. it's not even that they have to deserve it but it, but god tells us to honor that's them that's right that's what the word if they says. deserve it or not yes right? absolutely and i think that's a theme just throughout scripture we can't do things based on the other person but it's according to who god is and if we right. if like you said it benefits us just right. like forgiveness we have to forgive not because the person deserves it or because they apologize because sometimes they may never apologize You're right, right? They'll never because apologize. god's word says to forgive it benefits us to just do what god says even if it doesn't make sense even if we don't really understand why but there is a, a blessing. Yes, it doing is. It it's a benefit. To the word of God. It's a benefit. <laughs> Tell me. It's a benefit. So, Ashley, what are some ways that maybe somebody can honor their mom, even if they have not had the relationship yeah. that they know a mother and daughter should have or a mother and son should have? I think you can start honoring just within, like I said, forgiveness. If you just mm, need to forgive them good. from your heart, I think that's one way you can honor your mother. Um, a phone call, picking up the phone right. and just saying, hey, I just wanted to check on you. Yeah. just wanted to let you know that I love you. I, uh, you know, mm -hmm. I want to honor you. you. I think you can verbally honor and affirm. Look for some, one thing they did right. Yeah. Even if it's not a long list, like say, hey, thanks for giving birth to me. <laughs> <laughs> if, yeah. Maybe that's all you can thank yeah, them for. But true. I yeah. think looking for something to highlight and looking for a, a way to affirm is a way you can honor them. I think, of course, you can give a gift, you can send flowers, a card, yeah, a card. just yeah. let them know you're thinking of them. Right. Um, and, and just remembering that regardless of if I got everything I felt like I needed to get from you as a mother, mm -hmm. that's why we have the Lord. Like he's a father to the fatherless, he's a mother to the motherless. Yes. Like yeah. everything we need comes from him. So I think it makes it a lot easier to honor and to forgive and to respect you know, a person who's flawed, if you're 
connected to the source of, of love and, and peace and comfort. If I'm getting everything I need from the Lord, then, you know, he's filling in all the gaps because yeah. we're not perfect. We're not going to do everything perfectly and get it all right all right. the time. So yeah. I think that's a, a way to shed light on like why it's important to give grace and mercy to yeah. our earthly parents because, you know, at the end of the day, we, we have to look to God to get everything that we need. Yeah, that's good. So, that's good. Absolutely. That's good. So honor your mother. Honor honor your mother and your father. That's right. Amen. Um, so that your day, so that you'll reap the benefit. Yes. Of it. You know. That's good. Ob obedience to God. That's I didn't awesome. know that about, you know, taking care of Grandma Francis and your even your yes. father when they yeah. were older. So I learned something new today. Yeah. Yeah. Um, another thing I wanted to... Ooh, so many things I want to cover. <laughs> I'm like, Lord, help me. What time is it? How, How much do I want to do have? this? Uh, who say how much time do we have? <laughs> um, one of the things that that I remember uh, hanging out with you, and this is this is amazing to me too. How you would spend time somehow spend time with each of us by yourself. At least I remember this. I don't know if the guys got this or not. <laughs> but I remember us hanging out. Uh, sometimes, I, I don't know if I got a chance to go to work with you. How do we end up oh, like yeah. at Saunders? Se several of you all went to work with How me. do we end up wow. at Saunders, the ice cream place, right? Yeah. Getting that ice cream. I'm getting excited. You know I'm greedy. I'm getting, getting excited. That I'm ice food. cream. You started this foodie thing yeah, in me. It's I your know. fault, right? Yeah, it's my fault. <laughs> but the, uh, the cream puff hot fudge sundae. Oh, yes. Oh, wow. wow. That sounds decadent. It was so good. It was the, 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 cre the puff. Yeah. What, right? With the ice like cream. Like a pastry yeah. with mm -hmm. the vanilla ice cream on top. and the Inside of the. Inside of the pastry. Put it inside. Oh, my God. Wow. And then the hot fudge the on the hot fudge <laughs> on the outside. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. <laughs> they, and they closed all those places now. <laughs> so, but it was, when did we get a chance to do that? Was it because when I, I went a, to, I used to work. Well, I'm living in Birmingham now, but I used yeah. to work in Birmingham. Right. And I, I used to go, actually it was a second job, uh -huh. and I did it on my time. And I used to take you with me, because wow. I'd be in the office there and doing yes. the work. Yes. <laughs> and so you we guys stopped, really we trained stopped by to... Saunders Ice Cream, oh, I Saunders way. Bakery. <laughs> so there are many yes. situations where you had to train them to sit still and oh. be quiet. <laughs> they knew how to do that. Because the boys I took when I was working at Metropolitan Hospital. Right, Metropolitan And I'd go Hospital. in sometime on Saturdays at 6.30 or 7 in the wow. morning. So I could get she, out early. This woman here, I'm telling you, I, I need to watch I her. And her they'd feet. come in and they'd sit at the, I worked in what they call a steno pool. Right. And they'd sit at the, the, the other desk, desk that was there. The but I'd desk. be there getting my work in so I could get out. And wow. Get out. I remember, I think that was one of the first conversations I had with you after I had Wyatt, because I was getting prepared to like go back to work. So I was like, how did you manage working and being a mom? Like, what did that look like, especially after? I mean, you Very worked. Very good question. Did you work while, you know, all your kids uh, were yeah, being through, raised? Through or did pregnancies. you ever stop working? Like, how, what did this that look like? This is good. Let me connect to her question, because this is a question that so many people ask. How did you balance it all, right? That's what you're asking. As far yeah. as working with the kids, how did you do this? Again, youth was on my side. Okay, we got youth. <laughs> youth. Got Ashley it. has youth. We got it. I'm and, not as young as was you really, is, but yeah. <laughs> it was really something I wanted to do. I wanted to get back out with People, people yeah. instead of kids. You're looking out forward to you got it. To so some moms are going to want to stay home, and that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. But don't feel bad if yeah. you want to get out. I was going to say there's bad. no guilt or shame if you right. are excited about going back to work. Okay. My husband actually wanted me to stay home. Okay. But you said <laughs> but you no. Wanted to but get out. we needed more things, you more know, the income. Mm -hmm. provide, you wanted to help so. with the income. So and you. I wanted to get out. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Uh, so you made it work. Oh yeah, we got a way to make it work. 
Of I course, I had you. to come home and still cook and yes, do everything. Yes, you did. <laughs> yeah, I think yes, you, you said did. you said at one point you were working nights. So whenever you were yeah, at work, at one the point kids were I at home with granddaddy. And, and then and, you and, said and, right. you had friends. Mm -hmm. You dropped them off with friends. It was always people you knew. You were blessed to have. Yes, a, I was always blessed to have people around me. So, so what wisdom and in, in what we're talking about now, are you basically saying that whatever your situation is, find what works best for you, find right. that rhythm, that contentment, that contentment. Yeah. Be okay. content, whatever you find yourself in, you have to be content with that. Okay. And everybody can't do the same thing. That's good. Don't yeah. compare yourself no. with other people. No. no. Right. Other mothers, you right. have to. You have to know your capacity and right. and and come up with the the rhythm and the plan that's going to work that's for your household for and your, your family. Yeah. Okay, okay, that's good. That's and even good in, in your desire too, don't compare because this person's content staying at home. Right. You don't have to feel bad Absolutely. that you want to. Like I, I always knew that I would like a balance. Like mm -hmm. I get to work part time, which is something I'm really grateful for because I get to spend most of my week at home with the baby, but I still get to go into work right. three days a week and have that break and get to have adult conversations and have a creative outlet. So I don't think there's any shame in, in doing it no, all, no. And being what at home all the time, or if you have to work full time, or if you have to work part time, it, it all is worth being celebrated. It's right. all, it all yeah. can work. So, yeah. Right. So Ashley says you're, you're I'm gonna come back to mom because we have a few scriptures that we're going to go through with you. Um, but Ashley, new mom. Yes, very new. Four tell me, months Tell in. me what's, what's the greatest part about being a mom. Oh, gosh. Well, why <laughs> it is or, just or the let's, best. Let's stop. Let's wait because, yeah, because that list is going to keep going. Yeah. <laughs> let's start with the challenges. What are some of the challenges of being a, a mom? Man, I, thank God I can kind of say the same thing you two have said. I can't think of too many challenges other than you have to get used to the, you know, less sleep. I like my sleep. <laughs> I, I was a, uh, eight hours per night, didn't wake up in the middle of the night. I've talked to some friends. They're like, oh, yeah, I get up to go to the restroom. And I'm like, I, once I'm asleep, I'm out till my <laughs> alarm goes off. So I think that was probably the first hurdle was getting used to the interrupted sleep, which is uh -huh. still a yes. thing now. Yeah. But <laughs> I'm used to, I, I feel like I can kind of roll with it. I was very nervous about that. I was like, how am I gonna, especially when I have to go back to work, how am I going to go back to work without getting my uninterrupted eight hours of sleep? Right. But the Lord has helped me get through that. <laughs> so I think that was a challenge. And, you know, I think even what we were just talking about going back to work, when I'm at work, it's this weird, like, I guess, catch 22. Like when I'm at work, I miss him. But when I'm at home, sometimes it's like, oh, I'm excited to go back to work. So it's like this, yeah. <laughs> you feel this pull sometimes, but okay. I am very grateful. I, I, I'm my own boss, so I can make my own hours. I can do what works best for me. And I know not everybody has that. What about hormones luxury. or luxury? Emotions. I can't say I had a, I didn't feel like an emo emotional roller coaster during my pregnancy. I had a great pregnancy. Awesome. And even after the fact, thank the Lord, I, I can say that since I've had a baby, I've, I've felt like myself. Good, um, good. And I think a, a, a good thing that I did when I was pregnant, I, even actually probably before I was pregnant, I would just pray and like declare things there you go. over That's myself good. that, you know, I, my emotions are in order. Like, I'm going to have a, a great pregnancy. I'm going to have a great uh, mm -hmm. postpartum period. Like I just would really declare scriptures and, and things over myself that I have the peace of God, that I'm not anxious. Um, because I really do believe that although there's challenges, I think I think there can definitely be way more benefits and, and joy to being a mom than there are you know, the, the harder parts of it. Right, right. Um, and but, but what you said, I think is real important that we need to take away from, and that is the confessions. Yeah. Speaking right. what speak you life, speak. Right. You got to sure. speak life over right. every situation because you're going to have challenges. You had challenges in, in having Wyatt. Mm -hmm. You know, you had planned to go natural and then, you know, something else happened. Yeah, you know, I had to have a C-section. Different, different things And happened. even in that, like, I think just being flexible. I, I think we as women, especially, we kind of want to control things. We want things to be perfect. 
And it's just, that's just not realistic. That's and not that's realistic. kind of boring, right. honestly. Perfection's <laughs> over. So I, I had a plan. I think it's important to make a plan and to prepare as much as you can. But at the same right. time, I knew that nothing's going to fully prepare me for motherhood. I'm not going to know it till I'm in it. No, absolutely and it's not. Okay, and that's okay. So I, I went into the whole labor and delivery process with like, I'd like this to happen, but if it doesn't, it's okay. Mm -hmm. At the end of the mm -hmm. day, I just want a healthy baby. I want to be okay. That's, and that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's all that matters. Yeah. So yeah, you just have to be, I think you just have to be flexible. You yeah. can't hold on anything too tightly because then it can steal your joy and it can mm. make you sink into this hole and then you're just dwelling on it too long. Yeah. I think you just have to be intentional about like, let me focus on the good. Let me, let me just speak life. Let me yeah. thank God for all of the blessings and not dwell on what didn't go right or what hasn't happened yet. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think so that's confessions, huge. grab those. Where did you find the confessions that you had? There is a, there's a church. Actually, I think they're out of Nigeria. It's a church somewhere in Africa and it's called Elevation Church. And I know there's an Elevation Church here that's very popular. So it's not that, mm -hmm. but it's another church and they have they're on their website. I think I just Googled like declarations about pregnancy or declarations about childbirth. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. And their website has de uh, confessions for really everything, family, your health, your finances. Awesome. Um, and I really like just clung to those and I would read them and say them out loud mm -hmm. almost every day. Um, just because I, I believe in the power of our words and, and our confessions. Awesome. So I, I try to speak those out loud every day and, and I've shared them with friends and they've seen a major difference in their first pregnancy versus this pregnancy since they've been saying confessions. So awesome. I, I really believe there's really power in it and there's power in the word of God and just our words yes. coming into agreement with the word of God and alignment with, with the word. Um, but awesome. yeah, I think that's been huge in overcoming any obstacles, but I can say the joy of it has been yeah. being uh, able to like have that help. Like you said, you had your mom and I've had you mm -hmm. and it's a real win-win because obviously yes. you love spending time I with him as much it. as possible. <laughs> I love knowing that he's in good hands. I'm obviously saving money on childcare. <laughs> She's not charging me anything, which is no, great. No, I'm not. <laughs> um, so I, I've enjoyed, I, I, it's like, I always say he's our, like our family toy. Yeah. So I love But what did you feel when you saw when he came out. I, it, I, can you put that you, into words? You can't. I was just like, <laughs> wow, this is him. Like, cause you wonder like, what are they going to look like? What's their personality going to be like? And it, no, nothing's ever as good as what it, like, you can't imagine it. I was like, I couldn't have thought this kid up. <laughs> and you probably try really hard to just make this perfect child. And they right. always exceed that. So he's the best. He's just so sweet. And I think it, I think my favorite part of motherhood is that it's allowed me to really understand how much God loves me as his child mm -hmm. because you love your child so That's much so true. and you just want the best for them and they can't love they can't really do anything to love you back yet when no, they're, when they're they babies <laughs> it's like you can't even tell me you love me but I just love you no matter what like no you're just the best what. thing ever and so often when I'm thinking these things about Wyatt, I'm like, this is how God feels about me, but probably times a million. And that's been a real joy because I think it's made my relationship with God so much richer mm. because it's everything is out of relationship. It's not like I have to do this so that that's good. God's not angry with me or I need to check these things off of my Christian list. It's been like, oh, he's my father. Oh, he loves me. And mm -hmm. it's out of a relationship that I want to, you know, be obedient to him and and live the life that he wants me to live. So I think that's been one of my favorite things about that's being awesome. a, a parent is that you get to kind of see it in a new light of yeah. what God is because he's a parent. That's he's so a true. That's so true. I, I love that. Yeah, I, that's one of my favorite parts of being a mom too. You know, first of all, it's just fun. And yes, and it's it's all, it's never a boring moment. And I, can, and I no. say that with two. I call them Alpha and Omega because I started and ended. <laughs> but you had... 10 of us. Never so a dull you moment. never had a dull moment, never. which I want to go to another part. Um, what I wanted to ask you about, even though Ashley, they had all of us, they always had everybody else's kids too. <laughs> yeah. It friends. was like everybody was at our house. You, you, you mentioned about dad earlier and I said, I was going to go back to that, but dad always had like 
what organized athletic Bas- ba- baseball <laughs> yeah. Bas- yeah. Bas- yeah baseball team, bowling sure. so track city. right he yeah. did it for the city S- track everything unbelievable so that's where they they could go with him <laughs> <laughs> all the guys so he kept all the all the brothers mm-hmm. um busy but but i think that is just amazing and again we can speak to people who mothers who desire to have children and maybe didn't have biological children but there's so many opportunities oh, yeah. out there and 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 i want to come in and celebrate those mothers who have taken out time with other people's other children, children because yes. even though you guys had us you're you're known as the mother of the nations how <laughs> how how can well, you share you your all... love with us <laughs> and probably we got kind of jealous sometimes every now and then but you share, you have all the love in the world to give to people actually i mean literally around the world mm. how do you do that well we we called our home the community center <laughs> That's it accurate. Was, and it especially was. because you all couldn't go to no, anybody that, oh, else's house. Oh, I forgot. House. We couldn't spend a night anywhere. That, so that was the alternative. Oh, my goodness. You guys, guys, <laughs> guys, 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 I got it They now. couldn't go to anybody's house. That's right. House. We couldn't. I finally so got to So everybody had to come to my house. Too. I get that now. <laughs> Yeah, I get yeah. only person, person I could go to was my grandmother's Being house. Be selective about where your kids are spending the night. Yeah, definitely, for sure. definitely. So, so that's why. Yeah. Yes, that was a big reason. Okay. Okay. That was the big reason, and then <laughs> too, as you all grew up, you got into music, mm-hmm. and uh, you had bands and whatever all to my house that's right we had rehearsal everything <laughs> wow. in the basement that's true everything yeah yeah so. but but what about what about the heart and not not just the heart but the unselfishness mm-hmm. on your time and who you are you you give of yourself so much to so many other people really you are you are you are the mom to thousands and thousands of people. <laughs> yeah, I have a right? lot, of, lot of daughters. So, so how do you do that? Do you do that but through it's, just it's, being who you are yes. and just extending that love? What? How do Absolutely. You do that? I don't know. Maybe you all groomed me for that. But, yeah, maybe but it's been wonderful. It's been wonderful. Again, you know, uh, what I've poured into them, they turn around and pour right back into That's me. That's true. So... And I think it's because you have such a really great relationship with God. You're right. You just rely on him for everything. And I think, too, one thing that I guess I'm learning from you right now, especially knowing you wanted two kids, I'm sure you had a picture of what motherhood would look like oh, yeah. and I, how different it probably turned out to be, but it was better. I think <laughs> you probably just you don't better. realize like what what you're capable of until you're just you in that situation and you have to rely on the grace of God to you know mold you to that exactly you you and just being be. flexible and laid back mm-hmm. and like I think that I don't think she has a choice but to be laid back when I'm always like <laughs> my grandmother is so chill like she's so laid back and I'm like she you had see? to be because you would have been pulling your hair out if and you, you knew your grandfather too yeah so she had being to be laid married back. to granddaddy is a whole <laughs> that's a whole other topic but yeah raising kids having their friends over you know, managing that and working, it probably just sounds overwhelming to anybody. Mm-hmm. But I think it's like, you just don't know what you, the capacity you have until you are just in that situation. So right. just go with the flow, <laughs> trust God, Yeah. Ha- ask for help when you need it, yeah. rely on other people. You weren't trying to do it all yourself. No, right. You weren't too proud to ask for help. Right. So I think that's, I think you, or just yeah, and, and not, and now. I think it's so good. Actually, I think it's a great point, especially with what you're pointing out with Grandma, and uh, and that is not to be so uptight. It's okay yeah. that things aren't perfect. Oh, like yeah, you said, definitely. perfect yeah. perfection is overrated. It's overrated, you know, <laughs> and it makes you unnecessarily anxious because it's a, it's an unrealistic expectation for everything to be perfect and yeah. for nothing to go out of you know, go out of order or yeah. to change according to your plans. It's just, it does bring this like uptightness and anxiety. And I think you just have to really learn to learn to let relinquish. It go. Yeah. And I, I think relinquish. I had to start doing that. Um, when I was pregnant, I think 
and another big area is like worrying about your kids mm -hmm. and how do I overcome worrying for my kids? Because like I said earlier, you love them so much and I think the enemy can try to spin that and turn it into this fear and like how, do you, how important is it to give your kids back to the Lord and mm. how important is it to let go of your kids even when they're, you know, in your house, in your care you know, before they're adults, but like how important is it to yeah, give your kids life. to the Lord? Cause I think God was showing me that even while I was pregnant, I was like, I have to just trust God with my child. Cause the same way he sustains me, he's going to sustain my children. Yes. And I have yeah. to just know that you have to, they belong to him. Like if they're, if I'm like taking ownership, it puts this unnecessary, unnecessary like responsibility and burden. and burden and fear that I have to make sure they're okay all the time. And it's right. like, that's just, I can't be you with can't my be kids there. all the time. Like, it, cause I would never sleep. I remember no. like the first night I brought Wyatt home, I was like trying to go to sleep, but I would just like look over at him like, is he okay? Okay, is he he's still breathing? And I'm like, I would never sleep. I can't do this. I was like, I just, I have that, to just I trust God and huge. go to sleep. Yes, I think that is And huge. I think that has that to never continue. Stops. I was it gonna never say, stops. when they when they go to high school, when they go to college. This like, one here, You still. never stop worrying about your she children. She has all of us and now all of you guys. Yes. <laughs> How many grandchildren? 24. 24 grandchildren. I thought you had more. 14, than maybe more than that. 14, at least, I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to like, remember somebody. I thought we were up in the so, so at least 14 great grands, right? Yeah. How about she still will say, call me when you flying out of the country. Yeah, <laughs> she wants call to know. Call me when you land. I'm like, mom. Let me know when you make it home. We are all on like flights all over the world. Different time zones. So, Just let me know when you're going. <laughs> Yes. How how did you manage that and not worrying too much about your children? Great, great. And you thing. can answer that too. Well, I didn't I didn't really worry about them because, like I said, they had learned about the Lord from themselves. They were we mm -hmm. kept them in church while they were in our house. You <laughs> right. had to be in church. Mm -hmm. That's right. No choice. So that got kind of got down in them. So it wasn't much worry. And then you all got married. At yeah. young ages, all mm -hmm. of my children got married at young, except Ronald. Ronald never got married, mm -hmm. and uh, so, hey, they were good. They, yeah. they knew the word. They you knew what to do. God. Yeah. But of course, you always pray for them. They're never off your heart. Yeah, so that's good. That's even good. now, if, like if she finds herself somewhere in Africa and didn't yeah. tell me about it. She's yeah, in trouble. Get it. Yeah, She's in, in trouble. trouble. <laughs> She's going to get it. It's like, oh, or if I'm, or if I'm on a TV show, you didn't tell me you were going to be on. Prayer is important. And then, of course, when 9-11 happened. Oh, yeah. You were on a plane. I was. That had to come down. That's right. Who else was that? Donnie it was McCurkin. a few of us. Yeah, Donnie, we were, yeah. But we were landing in Chicago. Had, yeah. Yeah. So, so, so was, mother. That's something you want to know so yeah, you can pray. You can pray. Lord, cover them with your blood. Yeah. Keep them. Yeah. Got but, it. So, but that's you know, the, that's when you go beauty. through those things, you like to know. Prayer works. Yeah. That's yeah. the beauty yeah. in, um, in having a great mother is, is knowing that they're praying for you. You know, um, we celebrate mothers because mothers, we never stop. We never stop praying. We never, never stop, stop praying. caring. We never stop like you said, it's not about worrying. The Bible says be anxious for nothing and everything through prayer oh. and supplication with thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. Yeah. And make your request known to God and the peace of God. That's what yeah. you Woo, get. That surpasses That's what you all get. understanding. That's one of those benefits. Yeah. So, so <laughs> That's the trade-off to yeah. worry is you, ha you can't, you you can't pray peace and, and worry. No. It's like you have to choose. So That's right. I, I'm, I know for from experience, the way I've overcome worrying about something is like, oh, let me stop and pray. Like, yeah, right. you can just, you know, you your thoughts get can to... get away from you and just, you realize you're worrying about something. And it's like, wait, I need to pray. Let me pray about this. And then that's when the peace comes. Right. And you yeah, get right. that peace, right. you get to let go of the worry. So, so true. And I think this is a great time for us to kind of go into ministering a little bit. I want you to talk about, you know, again, give wisdom on, on raising children. But also, I think where we are, it doesn't matter. I think, how do I want to say this? It really doesn't matter where you are in the spectrum of a new mom, a great grandma, a mom, grandmom, um, or you just lost your mother, or 
you're, you're praying and you're believing to conceive and you haven't been able to become a mom yet, um, or you're a mom who, who has lost your children. You know, you, you, you lost the son. But, but what I'm gathering and what I know I've learned from you, mom, is that whatever state you're in, if, you, if the Lord is your foundation and the word of God, you're living by the word of God, Absolutely. then God will provide, <clears throat> he will provide whatever you need. If you he need will. strength, if you need wisdom, if you need help, encouragement, um, encouragement um, when you look up, God is always there. He's always there. You know, and he's there for every stage of life. God has been so faithful. Every I thank God for the mothers, mm -hmm. not just my mom, but the mothers in church. Like you said, oh, the community yes. that yeah. that that rebuked you, that corrected you, that that you know loved on you. Yes. You know, um, I remember again. I'm going back to food. You know, <laughs> we could get we could get ice cream every Sunday, and and you know, mother, what was my what am. Mother Sturdivan was one of the mothers, I think. Sturdivant, they yeah. would give you little coins, a couple of quarters, you know. <laughs> All of that is a part of my life. It's a part of what, what built my foundation. It was so many anointed hands of mothers that, that contribute mm -hmm. to, to, yeah. to nourishing me, you know. And, um, and it's just priceless. It's priceless. Mothers are priceless and <laughs> absolutely we're so blessed to have you mom and i pray my kids are blessed to have me as a blueprint on what to do and what not to do mm -hmm. um you 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 exude so much strength but yet you're so tender at the same time <laughs> you know and that's that's a beauty trait For of sure. motherhood being strong because I remember Kenny, after you came home from having Wyatt, was like, man, your daughter is really strong. Yeah, he keeps saying, man, my respect, my respect for you has just gone like, to a new level. Oh, my God. And even Ashley's seeing like how, how multitasking is just in our DNA almost. He was like, how do you have Wyatt and get dressed? And I was like, so, oh. Like, so they yeah. just need to stop for a while and look just at what you really got. look at what all we do. Whoa. And we will appreciate our Yes, mothers. and when I had my first one and I realized, I was like, oh, geez, is she a 10? <laughs> oh, okay, mm, I can do it. Yeah. I can do it. I can manage too. I exactly. can do this. Exactly. Um, but anyway, let's, let's look at a couple of scriptures, uh, Mom. Let me see. I think the first one, because again, we, we all know the, the famous Proverbs 31. The yes. Proverbs 31 woman. This is, I think she's 31 plus more. <laughs> Absolutely. All of you Proverbs 31 mothers out there, I commend you, I respect you, I love you. And that, that is just the standard. You know, the Bible Lord gives us guys, a standard. The yeah. Bible gives you right? everything you need. Everything, everything you, need. you need. That's all that we have to look at. If mm -hmm. you want to follow it. Right. If you want to follow it. So everything. You're telling the mothers today that I'm what? I'm telling them everything you need to raise your children is found in the scriptures. Okay. Awesome. All right. But you have to want to follow you it. You have to follow it. Everything you need? Everything. Okay. He didn't leave out anything. <laughs> Not anything. <laughs> the rough times he shows oh, up. I mean, all of us, yes. again, you had all of us, so multiply the times we got sick. Multiply oh, the times. Oh, don't even mention those times. Oh, my goodness. Measles, mumps, chicken pox. <laughs> everything. Oh, my goodness. Time and you all seen, as soon as one would get well, the other one would come down. <laughs> oh, my God. Non-stop. Oh, non-stop. <laughs> Never a dull moment. But you, but we you had to so take much... a whole summer <laughs> away from me. <laughs> a whole summer. But you summer. always had joy. So again, tell me this. Praise God for I Jesus. I tell you, it was the youth. It was the youth. <laughs> the wow. You, you got young. that. You got that, Ashley. <laughs> Still. Okay, so Proverbs 22. You wanted me to read well, Proverbs 22 well, and 6. Uh, like I said before, you have to have a plan. You have to have a plan. That's you don't true. just have children mm. and let them do that like they do nowadays. Yeah, we didn't raise y'all. Y'all raised The children us. tell you what they want to do. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And that might be somewhat all right sometime. Mm -hmm. but Got it. 
you know, you have to have a plan. There has to be discipline. There has to and be. And that's hard for a lot of mothers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, well, you know, and nowadays some mothers they, even they, say, oh, to whip my child? Oh, no, you don't mm -hmm. do anything. You do anything to hurt a child. No. Well, you're you not hurt hurting them. You, them. You're you hurt them when you them. don't discipline. Right, you're, you're loving them. them. That's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's and, true. And I had twins. And, and even when those twins were, I'd say about uh, one, one and a half, mm -hmm. or not, not, not even that old, because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. they'd be still in the crib. In the crib, and, and, yeah, and, maybe and, about you know, nine something months. about a man's voice. Mm -hmm. When he comes and tells them to stop doing something, they would just fall down in the crib. <laughs> <laughs> they knew his voice, Yeah. You know? Sometimes yeah. they'd try me, because yeah. I'd, I'd say something soft. <laughs> right. <laughs> And then I'd get my switch, uh -huh. and they know that I meant switch, business. The switch did a lot of talking. <laughs> yes, but you didn't even, have even to back, bother us. The dreaded yeah. switch. I even remember back, back there they had they had books. Of, I think it was Doctor Spock, and he was telling you how you didn't you didn't have to discipline your kid. You didn't have to. I said, mm -hmm. What is he talking? What about? is he? Th because again, it goes against the word. <laughs> it goes against the word. The word says, in like in this scripture, uh, Proverbs twenty two. And six says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart and with how it. how true that is. That yeah. They kind of lose their minds when they get in their teens. A yeah, little bit. yeah, yeah. Kinda, <laughs> kinda. But they don't go far. They don't go far. Because they got the word in them. Yeah, wow. I think you wow. train them up. You have to start at, start a, young at a young age. Start at a young age, right. Because kids learn things so fast. Right. They can look at a commercial and learn the whole song mm -hmm. and the dance that goes with it. Right. Before they get yeah. one or two years old. That's so true. you know they're learning. So you know they can learn, right. So you can so train them. train them with the word. Yeah, like That's Ashley good. brought up about teaching us how to be still. You know, we were growing up, we didn't have children's church. We were in church with everybody else. Yes. And they would sit us on the if front on row. The row same Wherever role with me. <laughs> yes, and you better not. And you move. didn't have to go to the bathroom. Go to the bathroom before you <laughs> go in because you're not going anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you're not going anymore. And they learn to sit. That's Even right. at home. That's right. You have to train them you have because to train kids them. will play all day long until they fall out. Yeah. Right. But there's a certain time of day you tell them, sit down. If, the, if you don't go to sleep, just sit down. Yeah. Be still. And you're, do, you're really doing your children a favor when you train them. Right. Like When you train them up, because you don't know where they, they need it. Them. They, they need like, it. We need, our, we need our parents. We need... I could go to the mall with five or six boys with me. Oh, my God. And they knew how to just follow me. And if, if I was doing something to train, get over there. And if it's a seat, sit down. <laughs> if not, stand up and be still. Go the people used down. to just marvel. <laughs> what are they? Why are they not running all over the store? Wow. They knew better. They knew better. Because I carried my switch with me. Yes, okay. that with switch. You. I love it. So oh, man, Proverbs twenty two fifteen says, "Foolishness is is bound in the heart of a child." This is, they really believe this scripture. But a, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. What does the rod sound? It sounds like the switch. Yeah. <laughs> The switch. And what can the switch it, do? It hurts you for for the minute that you're getting yeah, it. Yeah, that's but right. But it's not. But it makes you. It's a hurt that you know you don't want to feel. That's right. And you that's know right. you're gonna get It'll it. It'll keep your hand from touching it, the hot stove right. the second time around. That's right. You know, and and it's not about abuse. No, it's, it's not, not about abuse. God is not. And that's God what is people against try to abuse. Lose. He's yeah. against hurting right. children. Um, right. But but training children. The Bible says to train them and to discipline, discipline them, them and, and, correct. And, and correct them, yeah. and that will keep them out of jail. Keep them that out of will trouble. keep them from hurting themselves That's and other right. people. That's so right. again, it goes back to the word of God. We have to learn as mothers, if we're going to enjoy motherhood the way we should, and if we're going to produce the children that we want to produce, um, then we have to go to the Word of God. Right. Yeah, we, we've been talking about training kids, and and I think we start really early. You start training them 
really yeah. quick. Yeah. So, yeah. hey, yes, where's beginning. Wyatt? It's time for us yeah. to start this thing now. <laughs> Let's get some practice in with <laughs> Wyatt. little Wyatt. Where's Wyatt? Thanks, Wyatt. Yay. Hey, buddy. Oh, my goodness. Hi, yeah, my sweet that. boy. Just in case. Just hey, in case cutie woody. It. Thank you. So do you start spanking them when they're <laughs> this size? No. Or... <laughs> well, no, hey, there's nothing like he's sitting there now. Mm -hmm. Suppose that was a hot cup, cup of coffee. Yes. And he tried and to grab it. And he's just grabbing it. And mm -hmm. you just keep saying, no, Wyatt, no, Wyatt. Little, Maybe little you have tap, to take tap. his hand. I said no. <laughs> uh -oh, Don't grandma's touch get that. <laughs> Don't Just get touch a little of yep. authority, authority in your voice. That's good. And let him know that you, he he's got to, to do know. what you say. He has yes. to listen. Of course he'll... you're going to move the cup of course. a little farther. Yes. That's something. right. But some kids <laughs> overdo that. <laughs> Look at him grinning. Look See, at him he's grinning. He's like, you're going to tap I've my hand? I've never felt love like this before. Yes. Oh, Even my When goodness. they're cute as this, you still got to yeah. discipline them. You still got to discipline them. Because you're looking me, out for them. Let me take him. Because he, he loves to look at his grandma. mommy. He, he loves, loves to see grandma. his mommy, too. He's hey, in love buddy. with his mommy. Hi, sweetie. <laughs> I love you. That's my baby right you. there. Hi. Now, Mom. Hi. I have to say, you guys are a little softer on the grandkids and great oh, grandkids. Definitely. Ah. That's your job. <laughs> right. It's the parents' job That's to your do job the, the, the tough stuff. Yes. Grandmas. Especially the great grand. Yeah. The great grands oh. forget them. They can do no get wrong. To be right? fun. <laughs> they can do wrong, but you, it's up to you to discipline them. <laughs> hey, buddy. It's up to their parents. So oh, yeah. uh, we celebrate all the moms. We celebrate all the grandmoms and the great grandmoms. Yes. Oh, yes. Man, Hats the new off. moms be encouraged. It's an awesome job. It's an awesome job. It's so beautiful. I mean, just think about it, Ashley. The Lord trusted you to carry this baby. Can't believe it. And to bring them into the world. What a beautiful Beautiful job. Challenging at times, right? But yeah. so worth it. Worth it. So worth, worth it. So all. worth it. Um, yeah. Yeah. And you know what? If your mom is 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 still alive and you don't have the relationship you want, then pray for the relationship. Pray for it and get it right. Get it Do right. Do more than get it go, right. Go past that and get it right. That's good. It may be something that happened and you don't even know what it was. Yeah, that's true. To that's get true. you apart, just pick up the phone, and call, get it right. and get it right. Yeah. It doesn't take a few yeah. minutes. Yeah, that's good. And it'll make so much difference. So much. At difference. least make so the effort. Difference. Yeah, that's true. Make so make much difference. Yeah, I think your mom wants to hold you quiet. Which I don't blame her. <laughs> I don't blame her. What slide you? Well, mom, thanks so much for being with me. Oh, it Thank was you a pleasure. so much. And I, pleasure. I look forward to doing more of these. You know, you're 84 now, 84, right? 84, soon and to looking be great. Soon to be 85. Looking amazing. Yes. So <laughs> thank you, Ashley. Thank you. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. I am so proud to be your mom. Your awesome daughter. <laughs> And now you're the best mom. Man, I'm just, me and your dad will sit back and say, man, she's really good. She's really good. <laughs> what do you think, Wyatt? You think I'm yeah, doing a good job? Wyatt thinks he's doing, he you're a great thumb, mom as well. Give me a thumbs and up. And I just want to thank all of you all for joining us um, here at Generations Celebrating Motherhood. We're so glad that you joined us here at Generations. Oh, Wyatt. He's grinning. <laughs> Generation celebrating motherhood. Um, happy Mother's Day. Make sure you call your mom. Um, make sure you honor your mom. And even if she's no longer with us, um, you can still honor her by living a life that's pleasing to God and know that God is with you and he loves you. He loves you so much. I pray this will be your best Mother's Day ever. And we hope to see you again. Um, the next time on Generations. Yeah. God bless. Bye-bye. Oh, Wyatt is just Say smiling. Say bye-bye. He's smiling so much. Say bye-bye. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Can we just go back to the simple kind of living? Can we just go back and maybe start from the beginning? Back to better days when love was for the given. Go back to the way we were. 
yeah, yeah, yeah.